Hello, today I'm going to be talking about Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Forleo. This came out in 2019. Um, Marie is a life coach. She runs a um, kind of like business coaching business, uh, but she used to be a professional dancer, has gone through quite a few transformations in her time and um, that is all detailed in this book. I first heard about Marie on the Happier with Gretchen Rubin podcast um, and I just thought she came off really well which is why I decided to pick this up. I actually got gifted it for Christmas. This book is a self-help book around Marie's mantra of everything is figure outable. The first thing that we have to deal with is the title. Everything is figure outable is Marie's personal and professional mantra um, and it's also like the kind of conclusion of every single part of this book, which is troublesome for two reasons. One, because I find made up words really infantilizing. So it's it was hard for me to take the word figure outable seriously. Um, and secondly, um, because the whole the whole thing is about like figure outableness is this singular kind of concept. And once you've gotten a hold of that, there isn't actually much more to learn. So like a lot of self-help books, it could have basically been a paragraph. I think that's the trouble with this book is that it's trying to be like, everything's figure outable, everything's figure outable. So why do you even have to go into detail about it when you can just figure it out? This philosophy is very important. I remember like the day that I found out that everything is figure outable. This is gonna sound like an ad nothing to do with this book at all. It was about five years ago. I'm not sure if I've told this story on a video before. I don't think I have. About five years ago, I was with some friends road tripping in the US. We were on the Blue Ridge Parkway, like driving through the Shenandoah on Labor Day weekend. And we didn't realize it was Labor Day weekend, but we basically just bought like a tent and some supplies and we're like, okay, we're not staying in a motel or a hospital tonight. Tonight is the camping night. Um, and we're, we're driving on about four o'clock we were like, okay, let's peel off now and try and find a campsite. Um, and then the first campsite we got to was firstly like quite far off the track. And then they said, uh, we don't have any pictures tonight. It's Labor Day weekend, what are you doing? Um, and we're like, oh, okay, we'll find another campsite. So we ended up going to like five different campsites and it was dark and I was now like, quite panicky. I was like, "Why? where are we going to sleep? We have, we did, literally didn't even know what state we were in. Um, cause this was before, like, we didn't have data. We had like an old GPS thing attached to the car. I was getting quite worried because I like to catastrophize. Um, and then I kind of realized that we weren't going to stop until we like found an adequate solution. Either we, we would keep going until we find somewhere or we'd just like die. <laughs> like what was, like the worst case scenario, we'd have to sleep in the car. So what, we'd sleep in the car, that's fine. It doesn't have to be a terrible, scary thing. As long as the goal is achievable, like I'm not gonna be setting world records for the 100 meter sprint, but as long as it's achievable, then if you keep working towards it, you will achieve it. And um, that's basically the whole, the whole basis of this book. I think this falls into another trope that I find really annoying about self-help books, which is that it has to be so consistent in its messaging that it doesn't really allow any space for nuance. So it has sections for if you keep telling yourself you don't have the money for your thing or the time to, to do this thing. Um, and she was like, oh, just wake up two hours earlier and like start working on it. And that's just not true. Like sometimes you can't do something without the money for it. Like you can't build a business around a physical product without you being able to make the physical product, for example. And even if you can like create more time in your day by taking away hours from sleep, that doesn't mean that it's worthwhile. But if this was called everything's figure outable if you have the willpower, but let's face it, sometimes you don't, it just wouldn't be as punchy, but it would be a lot more realistic. I think acknowledging like the valid reasons for not doing something, um, sure it's less inspirational, but I personally find that more empowering. If it said, okay, yeah, you may, if you think you don't have the time for this, or the money for this. Here are all the all the different ways you could, like there are ways for you to get around those things. But also if you're not getting around those things, it's okay to like admit defeat and accept that 
this isn't going to fit in your life at the moment. As I said, there's quite a lot in this book considering it basically has one message. One thing I didn't like at all um, were that they had these uh, figure outable field notes, which is basically some like really inspirational story of somebody that had like followed her work and transformed their life, which is a bit like arrogant in my opinion. But it does also include these sections called insight to action, which I think are really fantastic. They're, they're, they're better like um, self-help work sheets than I've seen anywhere else basically. So this one is like quite an in-depth one but step one list your top one year dreams, um, get real about this dream, pick one, make it specific, measurable and actionable, determine your next three steps and get started now. And it's just like if you follow these steps you will find you will either end up with like a plan to do something or more insight around why you haven't and are not going to do that thing. So I think those bits were actually really useful and actionable and I didn't do them all, I didn't do them on paper. I did a lot of them in my mind, um, but I would quite like to just like sit down and actually do them all now. Marie Folio is obviously very peppy, that's like the whole point of the book, um, and a lot of this is tells her story of how she went from like working in bars to like slowly building up her consulting business and you know becoming rich, whatever. Um, but there was one bit that really annoyed me, uh, and I'd like to I'd like to reach out to you. She's talking about being a misfit. I am misfit toys. Always felt like I don't fit in. My choices were really... when I heard this two word phrase for the first time in my head. It was as if someone whispered it to me. It was like a secret clue was being revealed to nudge me along my misfit path. Multi passionate entrepreneur, Marie, you are a multi passionate entrepreneur. This little made up phrase was transformative at a stage in my life. From that moment forward and without much forethought, when people asked me what I did for a living, I started saying I was a multi-passionate entrepreneur. I think that's bullshit because I could quite easily call myself a multi-passionate entrepreneur. Um, I work three days a week as a web developer, but I'm also a jewelry designer in the rest of my time. I have several different businesses. I make videos. I'm obviously like multi-passionate, but multi-passionate entrepreneur is not a fucking job title. <laughs> I've struggled to give myself a title. I'm, I'm vaguely like creative technologist and maker, um, but you can't just, you ha you do have to pick something. And she's, she's saying it as if you don't, when she has, and we all do eventually, and I'm only gonna feel like solidly in my career when sure you can have side things, but you have one main, one main thing and your identity is one main thing. People that think that they have multiple things and they're on the same level are either kidding themselves or not there yet. I definitely fall into the not there yet pile. I'm still figuring out, but you can't just be like, I'm just a multi-passionate entrepreneur. Like that's valid. It's, I just, I don't think it's very valid. Shout at me, please, but I don't think it's valid. That is enough at me like half ranting at this book, but I thought it was worthwhile doing a video on, specifically for those um, like insights to action bits. I think they're really interesting. And you know, if you need a kick up the butt, to like get your life in order and uh, some inspirational stories, um, this is the book for you. There are lots of other self-help books. My favorite being The Obstacles Away. Shit, I'm just gonna get it out. Why do I have two copies of this book, you ask? Because I've given away like 10 copies of this in my life. So I just like to always have extra ones on hand. Obstacles Away, The Art of Turning Adversity into Advantage. Same concept, way better in my opinion, but. I'll leave links to this down below. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.